I want to continue today sharing from the Word of God on the subject, the reconnecting Jesus. And today I want to help you to grasp the reconnecting love of Jesus. And I believe that the Lord will have me minister in this way because he is going to use you in helping people to reconnect. I turn your attention to St. John's Gospel, chapter 21, and I read to you from verse 1, verse 1 to 17. John 21, 1 to 17. This is uh, in reference to the resurrected Savior. John 21, 1 to 17. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. I like those words. In this way, he showed himself. How did he show himself? In a reconnecting manner. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? They answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment for he had removed it and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, about 200 cubits, or maybe uh, 100 yards, 100 yards, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land full of large fish, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, come and eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread, gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Father, we pray that you would help us to grasp the truths that you want us to receive today for the purpose of implementing them in our own lives and in our own witness. May your name be glorified because of these truths we shall pluck from the passage before us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The primary character apart from Jesus Christ in our lesson today is Peter the big fisherman, a disciple of Christ. You remember Christ's first encounter with Peter. Uh, his brother brought him to the Lord and uh, Jesus welcomed Peter and gave Peter a challenge in making it abundantly clear that he would become an instrument in the hand of God. Peter went on to become one of the disciples who was in the inner circle. For oftentimes when Jesus in any uh, wanted to achieve any particular thing, he would invite Peter, James, and John to come apart from the rest of the disciples and participate in something he was going to do or experience. So Peter was close to the Lord. Uh, oftentimes he would uh, challenge the Lord in terms of 
things that he would say or things he would do and uh, Peter would be rebuked or Peter would be inspired to experience great things at the hand of Christ. You remember uh, it was Peter who saw the Lord walking on the water and said, Lord, if it be you, bid me come. And, Pe and the Lord said, come. Peter walked on the water. It was Peter who rebuked the Lord when he said that I'm going to go the way of the cross. And Peter said, you, you can't die. You won't die, Lord. And Jesus had to say uh, to him, get you behind me, Satan. Uh, referring to the fact that Satan was using Peter's concern and objection to try to steer Christ from his primary purpose for coming into the world. Well, when Jesus made it known that he was going to be taken by the Gentiles and, and he was going to be ill-treated and killed, Peter made his objections very clear. No, Lord, that's not going to happen to you. And uh, Peter even went as far as to say, Lord, Though all men may forsake you, I'm not going to, I'm going to stand with you. I'm prepared to die for you. Well, Jesus said to Peter, Peter, you're going to deny me this very night. And Peter did three times. Peter said he did not know the Lord three times. Okay, when the Lord looked at Peter upon his denial, he went out and wept bitterly. Peter goes to, the, Jesus goes to the cross and he is resurrected and Peter is made aware of the fact that Jesus is alive when Christ on two occasions appeared to them. Now, here's the third appearance of the resurrected Jesus and Peter is again the main character in this tremendous reconnecting incident. Now, first of all, Peter, although he had seen Christ, the resurrected Christ, Peter was not in faith and in relationship where he ought to be. It would appear that Peter, uh, knowing that he had boasted to the Lord that he would not betray him, here he was now having failed miserably. Christ is resurrected. What next? What next? How does he fit in to a relationship with the Christ that he denied knowing three times? Peter had apprehension. He, he wasn't sure where he stood with the Lord. To the point that between appearances, Peter comes to the conclusion. It could well be that the Lord does not love me as he used to. I'm not as useful to him as I once was, because I failed him miserably, I am going back to fishing. Now, Jesus had called Peter, and Peter had left the net and the boat and followed Jesus. And here it is now that because of his own failure, his own miserable mistake and condition, Peter is considering going back to fishing. So he says to the disciples, I am going fishing. I'm going fishing. I'm going back. Going back to what I know. Going back to what I used to do. I'm going back. Now what is interesting is that he and a number of the disciples were together. Why were they together? It would seem that they, they had their doubts and their own concerns uh, regarding their relationship with Christ. And uh, they must have been discussing the situation to the extent that when Peter said, I am going back to fishing, they said, we're going with you also. Now, what we see here is the fact that when we get to the place where we want to disconnect or we want to turn away from Christ and move away from the relationship we once had with him, when we take that step, we influence others. When Peter said, I am going fishing, the, the other said, we're going with you. We don't move away from the Lord and don't choose to live in a state of being disconnected without impacting others, without drawing others away. Well, they went fishing. They returned to what they knew. And the Bible tells us that they toiled all night and caught 
nothing. Disconnected people, people who are disconnected away from the Lord, who are not enjoying the fellowship they once had, who are not where they once were in the Lord, they might give you the impression that all is well, and they might try to convey to you the idea that the things are going well, but the truth is that they are toiling and they're not being rewarded for their toil. They're engaged, they're toiling, they're engaged in things, multitudinous things, be it business, be it a study, be it or education, be it other pursuits, and in spite of their involvement, they're not really succeeding as they would like to. The rewards, the, the lasting benefits of their engagement are not being realized. They're toiling, but they're not really being blessed and benefited. Well, I want you to note that it was in this state, this condition, that Jesus came to Peter and the disciples. The third appearance of Jesus, the third the third resurrected appearance, the third appearance of the resurrected Lord was to disconnected people. Disconnected Peter and those disciples. That's his third appearance. Now, I believe that this is important because it shows us that Christ is aware of those who have disconnected. For one reason or another, whatever, whatever might have been the cause for the disconnection, Jesus is aware. Jesus is concerned. Jesus understands the, the turbulence of their heart, the conflict that is raging within them, the unhappiness, the, the lack of success. He knows. He understands. And Jesus came to them.